happy July, everyone. Welcome to the HOF July board meeting. Um, we're very excited to be halfway through the year. We have a relatively light agenda today and we do not have any public comment. We do have a quorum present. So we are going to start into calling our roll and then we will move into our business. Oh my goodness. Lena Andrews. Here. Jamil Bay. Tammy Thompson. Karen Garrett. Present. Welcome, Karen. Jerome Jackson. Jerome, this would have been his last meeting, um, but he is not with us today. Jerome has taken a new position and actually moved to a new neighborhood of Pittsburgh. So the seat for the East will be um, repopulated and we are just awaiting the mayor's office um, to let us know who will be absorbing that seat. Um, Councilwoman Gross. Mark Masterson. Here. I am not able to see the full roll. There we go. Um, Deidre Washington. Marcus Reed. Dr. Paul Spradley. Here. Hello, Dr. Paul. Hi. Alan Cisco. Did not see Alan. Derek Tillman joined us. Here. Austere Clay. Adrian Wanaha, chair, present. Kelly Ware. Present. Wonderful. Um, and we do have a vacancy for the western section of the city, um, which again, we'll be looking to the mayor's office to provide us with an alternate advisory member. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes from June 1st meeting? And if so, do we have any questions, amendments, or a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Dr. Spradley motions. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Karen. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'm aye. I'm abstaining because I wasn't there. Thank you, Lena. Do we have any other abstentions? Okay, well, that was actually the only voting item for today's meeting. We again are in a position of not having public comment. Um, we are hoping that the surveys and the community meetings will generate a little bit more buzz about our meetings and hopefully we will start to see a little bit more public comment. Um, for those of you who've participated in the Pittsburgh United Housing Justice table, they've had some changes in their outreach and positions. Um, the housing justice table is a bit up in the air at the moment, um, but as they restructure, you know, again, hopefully we'll be able to get members of that group joining us with, you know, important and impactful public comment. Um, with no public comment being um, on the schedule today, we'll move on to our next agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, this is not a substantive change, but I do want to note it. Uh, my name's spelled incorrectly. Um, it's uh, spelled D-E-R-E-K but it, it's, it's correct on the roll call, D-E-R-R-I-C-K. So oh. we could just have that changed on the meeting uh, minutes. Uh, other than that, that was it. Thank you, Derek. Sure. So committees, committees is our next agenda item and we're so excited to get started with our small groups. Um, Derek and Dr. Spradley are leads of two of our committees who are looking to add some members and also get first meeting scheduled. And then we also have our, um, one of our committees did meet 
and we'll be getting a committee update. So do we wanna start with the committee that did meet and do that update? Does that make the most sense? Yes, I agree that we should move forward with the first committee. And I do wanna note that I'm here, Oster. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I think we have our chairs on deck, correct? Is that our committee, the innovation? Yes. <laughs> okay. Is Tammy here? I can't, I can't see. I'm having that same trouble. I apologize yeah. to everyone. <laughs> I don't believe she is. Nina. She is. Okay. I can, and I haven't prepared anything, so I'll just do my best. But um, Tammy and I are co-chairing the, what is it called? Program and Innovation Committee. I think that's our name. Um. So we had a good meeting, we met, uh, and there are a few other members of the committee on the call, so feel free to cover anything that I miss here. But we sort of talked about the need to evaluate how our programs are functioning now, and maybe we could do some benchmarking and look at other sort of housing opportunity fund type programs that are operating around the country and see what they do in terms of evaluation because we have a lot of programs right now that are functioning at a pretty high level. And before we make too many changes or try to start lots of new stuff, we should understand how the existing programs that we have are performing. And I think we do some of that with the annual report um, and some of the sort of more anecdotal stories we get from people who are served by all of these programs, but we could do something more comprehensive maybe in partnership with a university or some sort of research entity. Um, but we we talked about that. And then we also talked about how housing needs are fluid and we should try to think of different ways that we can understand how needs are changing, like how we, um, not necessarily as the Hoff, but we as Pittsburgh really, well, we as a country <laughs> really increased rental assistance when the COVID pandemic hit and what an incredible impact that had. Um, are there other sort of needs that are arising that Hoff should be more aware of that we were not as aware of when we started, um, whenever that was, six years ago, seven years ago? So those were the main things we talked about were benchmarking and then evaluation and we decided we were going to meet monthly, and I think we set a recurring schedule, so we are going to keep moving and working on our agenda, and anyone who would like to join us is welcome, and if I've missed anything, anyone else who came to the meeting, feel free to share. I know Oster was there. I, I can't see everyone who's on here, so. Yeah, that's a great summary. Um, I think we thought holistically about the housing environment and how the HOF plays a role in other um, systems and how we can, when we're looking at programming, how can we uh, ensure that our systems play well with those? So whether it's lending or investments or development or health, social determinants of health, um, being cognizant of that and trying to think innovatively. Wonderful. Well, having an understanding of what the committee is working on, um, are there folks here to, in today's meeting that are feeling, you know, really compelled to join the group in this conversation? This is a great time to let them know that you have interest so that they can put you on their distribution list and get you um, on deck for those monthly meetings. It's a pretty fun committee. <laughs> and we meet on the third Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m. That is our regular meeting time. And you meet virtually, Lena? Mm-hmm. So anyone on the you know, call today that would like to join the committee? We're having a little bit of trouble seeing everyone. So if you wanna shout out or raise your hand. Um, we would love to get some more members in the different committees. You may also be waiting to hear you know, about the other two groups. So there'll be plenty of time in this meeting to shout out if you'd like to participate with one of the groups. So Dr. Bay, would you like to talk to us about 
community engagement, outreach, marketing, and advocacy. Uh, I think that that you meant uh, myself. Uh, I did mean you, Paul. I am so sorry. All right. Um, good morning. And by good morning, I mean good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just making sure that everyone's awake. So the the um, the group that I am um, leading is community outreach, and um, I'm just trying to open up my notes, but I am in transition, so I'm again, going freestyle, but the idea originally was to think about um, how we are communicating externally um, and to set some some simple goals with um, a, a, around the idea of using social media, around the idea of telling the story of the Housing Opportunity Fund, to see what we've already currently uh, been doing from, a, um, from an impact and reach perspective uh, uh, at, at, through engagement and then being able to get the voices speaking with um, folks that are residents of Pittsburgh, hearing their voices, and then uh, as a committee, amplifying their voices and or encouraging them to um, to use their own voice in the open public comments. Um, so um, I actually had some other thoughts written down, but I am, let me see if I can find that email really quickly. I know that there was some discussion um, amongst folks about making sure that these committee times are you know, really make really you know something that folks can engage in in a real way, um, and also getting more folks participating in committees than just the HOF. I think that this is one of the committees that has really you know taken that mantle of getting more engagement really to heart. And I know that many of the members of our group that are here with us today feel that that's an incredibly high priority. So, you know, as we, you know, just wait a, a moment for Dr. Spradley to take a look at his notes, you know, just really thinking about that piece of engagement that had really lived in a, in a sort of space that was outside of the HOF so that we were really seeing, you know, Pittsburgh United or other paid consultants that were really most focused on getting that voice back into the conversation. This is an exciting opportunity for us to really pull that voice in to this group and to the conversations that we're having. So I think that this committee is particularly, um, has particularly exciting possibilities. So for all of our folks that are so passionate about that engagement, I know, you know, Mark is often making those comments about how are we getting that voice community. This is such a great venue to have that conversation. Yeah, so again, some of the, uh, I, I did find some of the notes, but a few of the things is uh, once we first meet, we'd want to define our scope and our goals and, and what's our why around uh, uh, having a, a, a communication uh, and engagement focus. Uh, we want to take a look at um, our social media uh, on Instagram and LinkedIn and, and see uh, if there are ways to increase that specifically by having um, a certain number of posts uh, for the remainder of this year and then looking at some posts going in the next year, developing some hashtags. Uh, we want to uh, look at pulse surveys uh, in addition to some of the bigger surveys that are going out um, and uh, see if focus groups is a thing that we would want to do as well um, in the community uh, as it relates to housing so that we can get some really good information uh, because sometimes the public comments might come from folks who don't want to necessarily share it in a, uh, in a uh, public setting, but they might be more comfortable sharing that uh, to us as individuals or as a small group. Um, where there's not a camera necessarily present. So those are a few of the things that we'd like to do uh, as far as getting started, um, but looking for one or two more folks that are uh, willing to, to, to join the team. I think that um, the group is gonna be very efficient because um, a lot of the stuff will be happening already with the URA um, and we will just be looking at ways to improve and or supplement 
uh, some things that might be happening or not happening. Um, so it's it, I don't anticipate there being a, a heavy lift, but uh, this is a great opportunity that if you are either creative, um, have some um, organizational capacity or uh, the ability to talk with people, so you are social, um, this might be a good committee for you to consider joining. Thank you so much. Is there anyone that would like to have their name added to the list? You can add me to that list, Adrian. Wonderful. Thanks, Kelly. Me too, uh, Adrian. Mark? Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, and last but not, not least, of course, we have our DEI committee. Um, that committee is sort of absorbing some of the fair housing conversation that was happening and beyond that fair housing conversation. Derek, would you like to talk to us a little bit about your committee? Sure, sure. So this committee uh, really is for, you know, folks, uh, you know, passionate about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and uh, additional ways that we can bridge gaps. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, we're in our four, fourth year now with HOF. Uh, so I think we want to start off understanding the statistics uh, thus far. You know, uh, where have dollars been spent? Um, you know, uh, as it relates to, you know, the, the funding that we've provided, but also I think even organizations that have, you know, implemented uh, services and or projects. Um, and, and then also who's, who's benefiting, uh, you know, from, from the, the, at the end, you know, the end result. Um, and I do know that we have some of those statistics already. So we'll be looking to work with the URA to gather that material, but then where there's gaps in information, uh, we'll be wanting to kind of get that together to understand that first so then we can then develop solutions on how we can uh, you know improve overall um so we're looking at uh yeah you know, and, and definitely we we do want to have folks not just on F HOF board um as part of the committee but folks kind of in this space for example uh Megan Confer Hammond from Fair Housing Partnership who has presented uh multiple times reports and other information um, that will be helpful in guiding some of our initiatives. Um, uh, we also want to look at uh, how, uh, who the funds are going to. So being intentional about um, uh, having higher levels of MWBE participation uh, for the funds to be allocated to, um, but also who, who, are, who are the businesses being hired on the back end. Um, so I think these are things that we'll be looking uh, to improve. Um, and then neighborhoods that have high amounts of concentration of minorities uh, being being sure uh, and intentional um, that that the dollars are are impacting uh, you know DEI in, in that way. Um, there are several members. Uh, I think most are staff um, that are members now. But if if this interests anyone, and then we'll also be looking for uh, other ideas. Um, you know, other uh, ways to uh, in, in improve the DEI space and how our work with this board, these funds, um, particularly uh, impact uh, that space. So we'll also be looking for more innovative ideas that we can work together. And DEI is one of those things that really uh, need to be need to be embedded and integrated in, in uh, on all committees. You know, whether we're talking about uh, engagement activities, uh, some of the other innovative uh, ideas uh, from the first committee. Uh, so there might be some some overlap in some of our work, um, but this is really something that should impact uh, everything that we do. Um, so with that, I will stop. See if uh, uh, also if we can just get a um, if you are if you're already a member, if you could just remind me uh, of of who's a member already. And if there's anyone else interested, please, uh, you know, let me know now. And then lastly, I like to throw out some potential uh, dates, at least for those folks, uh, so we can lock down our, our first committee meeting. 
So I'm gonna put Karen on the spot just a tiny bit. So Karen, you had provided such incredible input when we had our meeting last month with the 504 conversation. I think you and your staff just bring so much to the table. You house so many folks in so many different ways. Um, I don't know if you've signed up for your committees yet, Karen. Um, I did. I, unfortunately, I was una unable to attend the committee. I'm on the committee, I think it's innovations and the one that Lena spoke of. Wonderful. Um, do you yes. by any chance, is there anybody at the housing authority that you think could be a good addition to Derek's committee that may not be on um, the HOF, but may bring you know, that incredible expertise that your team has to the table? Um, I'd like to think about that for a minute. That would be fantastic. I just know that we got so much great insight from your team, and I know they would bring so much to any conversation we're happy to have, but, you know, we do also understand the constraints of people's work. But if there is somebody that you could spare, I think that would be a fantastic addition. We'll take that under advisement. Thank you. <laughs> Well, this is not your last chance to join a committee. Um, we will be putting out information about all of the committees once we know when everybody is meeting. You know, we can continue to let you know what those engagement opportunities are. If you have not chosen a committee yet, it would be fantastic if you could join one through the month of July. Um, we have so many great outreach opportunities going on and being able to bring back the learning from those into the committees is gonna be incredibly exciting. And uh, if I may ask uh, Adrian and Kevin, I think I saw a document with you all's name on this committee. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Chad is... Uh out of the office this week, but I, I have a roster of his, um, I think it was from early June at this point, but, um, and it's not binding, but I'm seeing Adrian, Mark, and Derek as the advisory board members that are in this committee, at, at, at least at the time that Jad um, created this roster. Mark, is, I just heard you raise yeah. your hand for another one. Are you doing both or are you switching? Ones? Doing both. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, so I like to just throw out two potential um, dates we can finalize over email, but uh, I was thinking uh, the Tuesday before every HOF meeting or the Thursday before, one week before um, the HOF meetings. Um, I guess high level, do does one tend to work, we can figure out a time, but does one day tend to work for you all better than the other? Depending on what time we pick, Derek, I can totally flex. Preferably the morning? I can flex either morning. Um, uh, on the, the Thursdays, I've got a standing uh, loan review committee meeting each, but that starts at like, if we can do it at you know, beat over by 11, that would be great. Like in Tuesdays, I'm pretty flexible. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking that, you know, an hour, um, maybe Thursdays, nine o'clock, um, if that works. Sounds great. Sure. All right. We'll, uh, we'll tentatively uh, put that down. I'll, I'll further communicate with you all via email. And, and Adrian, I, I was also looking at um, some times as well, Thursday and Friday mornings, but I'll take Thursday off the table um, since uh, Derek's group is. So um, the folks that are on um, that are on uh, this committee, the committee that I'm, I'm uh, working with, can you see if Friday mornings at any point through the month of uh, through this month or Wednesday afternoons? So I'm not sure who all is intending to join you. Paul, Paul for, for um, Fridays, if it was the Friday before, I've got a standing board meeting in, uh, on Friday mornings. Um, so that, that makes it tough for me. If it was the fourth Friday, any other Friday of the month is pretty flexible. And Wednesdays, okay. I can okay. flex around too. Uh, we could look at the... Uh... 
a second or third Friday, if that works, so that the other folks were um, Adrian and Kelly. This Friday, um, the 21st does not work for me for the month of July, but generally speaking, um, my Fridays are fairly flexible. Okay. Mine are as well. Well, I just love it when a plan comes together. Um, the one thing that I did want to ask our members about is as health systems across the state become more active in our housing conversations, I'm curious as to how members feel about in our subcommittees inviting some of those key planners and stakeholders um, to the conversation because that could be a partnership where we could look at matching funds or enhancing funds. I mean, it just feels like that might be a smart um, partnership for us to start to explore. And so I'm curious as to what folks think about that. I, I personally think that's a good idea. Um, you know, I think uh, it's health and housing is a, is a big topic right now. Um, also, it's, it's another source, uh, you know, funding that can help you know, to provide and preserve more affordable housing. Um, and I think it, uh, you know, seems to be discussion around it um, for affordable housing, but also kind of that missing middle. middle. Um, and I think we need to be having the, the conversation from that perspective. So I, so I think it's a, uh, it's a good idea. Thank you, Derek. Those are great points. I, I would agree. Um, and I think that they, this might be a great place on that innovation committee where we're doing things that are kind of more forward looking and um, an opportunity for partnership uh, there, I think would make a lot of sense. I agree. Uh, I've been having some conversations with UPMC about uh, investing in housing, specifically housing counseling. Okay. Uh, first time home, home ownership. And I kind of feel like they want to do investment, but they're not really sure how. So I think having them on this, uh, at least one of the committees would be great. It would give them more options for figuring out how they can and want to be involved. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Tammy. So I think we are we are lucky with the UPMC health system. I think there's a lot of good existing relationships. Um, the fact that Jeremy Carter has gone to UPMC as one of the housing specialists, I think is a is a nice connect that could be very easy to leverage into the conversation. Um, what I what I don't feel confident in is having a really good um, visible connect at Allegheny Health Network. Um, our members, do members have good relationships with the network? Um, we can certainly just start to investigate and explore, but if someone has a good, you know, I connection do. already. I've got connections both on my board and, and with other work that we're doing here on the north side, so. Wonderful. Mark, would you be willing to do a little bit of outreach and let folks know what we're doing and see if they would like to engage with one of our committees? Um, sure. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And I will reach out to Jeremy. I agree with Kelly that the innovation and programming committee probably makes the most sense um, for housing folks, but that doesn't mean we couldn't have representatives on every one of the committees if people had an interest or desire to do that. Well, great, Mark. Can you just get back to us and let us know? Um, where someone might have interest if they do have interest so that we can do our follow-up? Sure, and do, uh, when I, uh, I'll communicate with you and, and with Evan to you know, make that connection. Great, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I'm still having view options, my apologies. I'm not exactly sure what slide is up at this point. We're still on advisory board okay, <laughs> the assignments, Adrian. For whatever reason, it's jiggling and shimmying for me. Um, I must have some connectivity issues today. 
Well, thank you, everyone. Again, this is not the end of the conversation. At any time, we can express interest, do some outreach, or just visit a committee because maybe the topic that they're talking about in a particular meeting is particularly salient or something that you're passionate about. So thank you to everybody who raised hands today. We will make sure that we do that outreach. And if you haven't picked your committee, there's still time. Um, and let us know what you're interested in so we can get you connected. We have All lots right. of good stuff to hear about from our URA staff. Thank you, Adrian. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Derek Kendall Morris, uh, Manager of Consumer Lending for the URA. Um, wanted to give two brief updates here. First, uh, the Homeowner Assistance Program has reopened for applications. Uh, we reopened on June 26th, so we've been open for slightly over two weeks, uh, and we've already received uh, about 100 applications in that two week period of time. Um, so we are furiously reviewing them and going through uh, and we will be accepting applications up until August 4th. Um, you know, uh, we have received some feedback and we've had some conversations with you know, the Fair Housing Partnership and others um, about how to make you know, the application process for HAP um, more fair and equitable. Uh, so this year uh, we will be uh, you know, accepting applications until August 4th, and then we will be prioritizing those applications based on uh, need, um, and uh, then selecting the applications that we're able to uh, approve. Um, uh, we can only approve 80 applications this year. So uh, again, we're two weeks in, and we've already received more applications than we will be able to approve. Um, so we anticipate that we'll receive you know, much more than that by August 4th. Uh, so we will be doing a randomized prioritization process this year to select those 80 applications out of the total pool uh, of eligible applications that we receive. So um, please spread the word. If you have anyone in your communities who wants to apply, they can still do that right now. Um, if they have questions, they can email us at hof at ura.org, um, or they can go on our website uh, and go to the Homeowner Assistance Program page. Uh, so that is ongoing. I uh, wanted to let everyone know where that stands. Um, next update, uh, the legal assistance program. Uh, we did release you know, a request for funding proposals um, about a month ago for uh, the legal assistance program. And we did receive responses from all of the current providers within that program. Uh, we did not receive any responses from any new um, organizations that wanted to join that program. Um, so we are working to finalize contracts with all of the existing providers and you know, we will be committing uh, the full $500,000 that was in the 2023 allocation, you know, uh, probably by the end of July um, with those new contracts. So just wanted to provide that update. I know we had talked about uh, that process uh, at previous meetings. So those are those updates. Thanks, Derek. We actually skipped ahead. We did our committee report out <laughs> already. Um, related to the HOF advisory board meeting location, we're still working through that process. I know that we want to have a physical presence and we also want to engage the community in a greater way. Um, so we're still working on options for what we could do forward. Uh, that's good. My turn again. Um, yeah, the annual allocation plan for the 2020, 2024 um, HOF funding allocation uh, is still underway. We have about four weeks um, of you know collecting surveys left, uh, but I am really excited to report that um, as of today, we have 381 completed surveys. Um, 349 of those were completed in English and 32 of them were completed in Spanish. Uh, which again uh, is a first for us. We've not done that previously. Um, so this is uh, far and above uh, what we've been able to do in previous years in terms of just the number of responses that we've received. Um, so I'm really grateful to everybody who has spread that survey far and wide um, and to Jad uh, for all of his efforts um, on the URA staff to 
you know, organize the survey, get it out into the community, and also to organize all of the community events uh, that we've been attending over the last few months. Um, so there are a couple community events that are still coming up um, as we close out the survey. Um, so uh, two dates, if anyone wants to attend either of these events, uh, you would be more than welcome to do so. Uh, we will be uh, presenting at uh, a, a Lawrenceville United meeting on July 13th at 6.30. And that's at the New Alliance Federal Credit Union on Butler Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on July 15th, we'll be at the Sheridan Community Council meeting. Um, and that's at 11 a.m. at the Sheridan Family Dollar Pavilion. Um, so both of those events are coming up. Uh, we've had, you know, over 10 other meetings that we've attended in other parts of the city over the last few months. And those have all been really successful um, opportunities for us to engage with people in person. Um, so if you haven't participated yet and you'd like to, um, please uh, consider coming to one of those events and letting us know. Uh, we'd certainly be willing to help you get there uh, if that's something you'd like to do. But. And Derek, there's still space if one of the community groups that members of the HOF are involved in would like to host something before the end of summer. We still have opportunities for that. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Just reach out to myself or Evan or Jad um, and we, we, could, we could put that together. Thank you so much. It's been a really successful season. It's exciting. Well, in um, Jad's absence, I can uh, run everyone through the next item, which are uh, program expenditures and updates um, as of last month. Um, so first, we're looking at the committed and closed funds um, throughout the, the programs here housed within HOF. Um, and then on the following slide, uh, will be actually funds dispersed um, across all of the programs. Next, we've got a breakdown of the down payment and closing costs assistance program uh, by council district and AMI level. This is a breakdown of our Legal Assistance Program, which uh, Derek just spoke about um, for our 2023 funds, which is very exciting. Uh, next, we've got a breakout of our Housing Stabilization Program by Council District and AMI. This is um, a breakout of the homeowner assistance program, which Derek also spoke about. We're currently collecting applications for uh, really robust demand for this pro for this program in particular. And then next we've got the development facing programs, both for sale development and our rental gap program um broken out here combined into lumped together as development dollars so to speak but then broken out by council district and, and ami and then lastly um an accounting of our demonstration program funds uh, that we've had throughout the years uh, i do want to let advisory board members know that uh, next month we'll have the before next month's meeting you'll have the annual report uh, to review for 2022, which along with the survey information that Jad and uh, others are working on and will distill for for everybody um, will hopefully give a good picture into kind of what demand has been and can help to inform the 2024 allocation plan process, which is amazingly already upon us here. So uh, should have a lot of good, very useful information for you all. Uh, in the coming months here. Evan, so the small landlord fund seems to, you know, be on the smaller end of expenditures and actual money on the street. Are there any barriers to that program that 
the URA is seeing that we should know about or be assisting with? Um, so we had been hearing from landlords that uh, the trade-off, so to speak, of, of taking, you know, a performing loan, but then also restricting the, the units to uh, accepting vouchers was an issue. So you'll remember a couple months back, we, we brought a reduction of the interest rate to zero um, in, hopes, in, in hopes to increase utilization there. I do, I do think it's garnered more interest. It just takes a little bit of time to close, to commit and close projects. Um, so I'm hoping in the, in the coming months, we'll start to see that number, especially committed um, increase. I know we, we, we get a lot of calls from people who might own a duplex or something like that that need funding, and we're always referring them to this program. Um, but as far as any other roadblocks um, or pinch points, I'm not thinking of any off the top of my head right now, but I'll also defer to Derek or Kyle on the call if there's other uh, obstacles that you believe are in place here. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, I'll just note that I know um, since we reduced the interest rate to zero, we have received um, multiple applications uh, that are sort of working their way through the process. Um, you know, we do see some applicants who apply. And then once, you know, our process is sort of explained, you know, some of the landlords have sort of disappeared um, in the process. So we're trying to, you know, ascertain why that might be, you know, uh, my suspicion, I don't know, but my suspicion is some of that may be just, you know, the way our programs work is, you know, we don't pay anything up front. Um, you know, and I think a lot of landlords, you know, if they're trying to talk to a contractor to get this project off the ground, and they explain to the contractor that they won't be getting any sort of prepayment or down payment on the construction work, it, it falls through. Um, so that may be something, you know, that we need to, to think about for the future. But uh, we do have several promising applications that we're currently working on. So um, I'm excited to see how those work out to see, you know, what we can learn from that. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, and something it made me think of while you were talking about it is there's a lot of incredible expertise in this group. And I'm curious if at any point in time, the URA would be interested in utilizing folks from this group to assist in something like key informant interviews or focus groups um, about the programs just to sort of expand capacity to get more of those conversations going. I know you're always talking to the folks that are applying, but if there were ways for us to supplement, you know, just trying to think about, you know, utilizing our membership to the fullest. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. I, I know just speaking for myself, but I would, you know, particularly for this program, uh, I think, uh, being able to connect with some landlords and have, you know, a focus group conversation or just some really good conversations about what they need and what they're looking for would be really helpful. And I know landlords, uh, for us at least, are, are a hard group to make contact with. Um, so yeah, any connections or assistance that anybody in the group might be able to provide to help us set something like that up, you know, I'd be very interested in that. Great. Well, hopefully as we're doing our committee work, we can sort of think in that direction of, you know, committees and their work and their memberships might be able to dovetail nicely into supporting the URA in some of these conversations. Does anyone from the group have any announcements before we talk about our next meeting. Um, just, uh, I, I can give you a few referrals relative to small landlords um, for that focus group. So when you're ready for that, just uh, just let me know. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, I'll connect with you on that. Okay. And this may even be one of those nice partnerships with the housing authority. You know, we're sort of trying to tap into the same people. <laughs> so maybe there are ways that we can support each other's work and just enhance the dialogue. So thank you, Derek. I was I was waiting. 
<laughs> I was waiting patiently to see um, your hand go up because I assumed you would facilitate some conversation related to the landlord. So thank you. Um, any other items before we talk about our next meeting? Well, we are catapulting through the year. Um, it's very hard to believe that we're talking about our August meeting already. We have a lot of planning to do. We're gonna be getting a lot of information about these community conversations. So we're gonna be shifting gears for the next half of the year really into understanding the landscape and allocations. So our next meeting is Thursday, August the 3rd. We are gonna to continue to do the virtual meetings until we have another good option to present to the group. Um, so if there are not any other business items for today, um, can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Derek. And thank you to everyone. We'll see you again on Thursday, August the 3rd. In the meantime, be on the lookout for your committees to be sending you some information about their next meeting. Thank you, everyone.